Hello and welcome to Mathematics Made Easier channel. This is your online mathematics tutor, Comfort Amwakun Atta. Today, I am going to take you through some questions and how to answer them in examination. So relax, take your mathematical set and your journal test and come along with me as we go through today's class together. Good. The first example I have here is under term and leaf plot. How to plot it? So example, so the following shows the distribution of marks in an examination. And these are the marks. 6, 42, 55, 10, 43, 8, 44, 12, 26. 22, 37, 36, 18, 31, 47, 53, 27, 39, 59, and 48. So these are the distributions. Take a stem and leaf plot of the maps above. Now the first question. B, find the probability of selecting a student between 40 and 50. C, what is the median mark? D, find the mean. E, E, find the mode. So these are the likely possible questions that can come under a stem and leaf plot. So now let's take it one after the other and see how best we can answer such questions. So for stem and leaf plot, usually the stem is written at the left side and the leaf at the right side. And single digits have their stem to be zero. Example, if you have, if you have six, it has the stem to be zero. But if you have 12, it has a stem to be one and the leaf to be two. Excellent. So with this one, for stem and leaf plot, the first thing to do is to identify the lowest mark. So let's go back to our max. What is the lowest mark over here? That is six and the highest mark, and that is 59. The lowest mark is six, and the highest is 59. So let's come back. So we have the lowest to be six, and the highest to be 59. For 59, the stem should be five, and for six, the same will be zero. So it means that we are going to have our same, we are going to have our same, so it means that we are going to have our same numbering from zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, this is going to be our stem. Then we now come to the leaf. It is usually advisable, though not always, to arrange them in order from the lowest to the highest. In this case, if you have a question asked, find the median, it will be very easy for you to find the median. Else, you have to rearrange everything again before you'll be able to identify the median. But if you do it straight away like this, it will be very easy to identify the median from your table. So going back to our distribution. Okay, so with this one, the first number is six. And so you are going to write it, the leaf, then we move on. 
The second is eight. You cancel out so that you won't be confused. So comma eight. Okay. Then the third one, uh, we come to the one column. So for the ones we have ten as the first number. So that will give us zero. That is one zero. Okay. Then the second one, we have twelve. That is one, two. You understand it? Okay, so you can continue. Then when it comes to the second column, we have we have twenty-two. Okay, we have twenty-two. We have twenty-six and twenty-seven. So let's go and fill it. 22, 26, and 27. Then we come to the third column. So three, the thirties. Thirties, we have 31. We have 36, 37, and 39. So let's go and fill it. We have 31, 36, 37, and 39. Then we come to the 40 column. For the 40 column, we have 43, we have 42, 43, 44, and 47. And 47. So let's then fill it. So for the 40 column, we have 42, 44, 47, 48, and another 48. Good, that is this one. Then we come to the 50 column. We have 55 and 59. Always, when it comes to like this, you'll be able to identify those that you didn't capture. So for the 50 column, we have 53, 55, and 59, okay, and 59. Good, so this is how to plot your stand and leave plot. Okay, so now it comes to the questions under it. The first question was, find the probability of selecting a student between 40 and 50. So what is the probability? So with this one, we have A, probability of selecting a student between 40 and 50. Becomes, you know, probability is what? The event over the sample phase. So what is the event now? Let's go back to our table. Between 40 and 50, we have 42, we have 44, we have 47, 48, and 48. So students who scored between 40 and 50, we have 42, 44, 47, 48, and 48. So one, two, three, four, five. So this will be the event. Five over what is the sample space? The overall. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So the overall, the sample space as 20. So simplifying this, you are going to get one out of four. So that is the probability of selecting a student between 40 and 50. So if sample questions can ask the probability of selecting a student between something and something, count the number of values you have there, then divide by the total number of values. Okay. Then the B part of the question was, 
what is the median mark? What is the median mark? So how do we find our median mark? Median, median is always equals the middle number. The middle number. So with this one, if you are fortunate and you get a single digit in the middle, then you take that as your median mark or your median number. Then, when but when you get a double digit, that is two digits, find the average of those digits. Okay, I'm making it general so that when you have and you meet a sample question, you'll be able to solve it. Then we come to the mean. How do we find the mean? The mean is always equal to the average number. So this mean this is a symbol. X with a bound top is equal to addition the number of values you added together okay so this would be your mean so with this one for the example we have over here we are going to add everything together six plus eight plus this plus this add everything together then you divide by the total number of digits that you added that is over 20. so if you get a sample question know how to tackle it then the, the last one is the mode when you talk about mode mode is the number that occurred most frequently so with this so for the mode so for the mode mode is the number that occurred most frequently so you check your table and you identify the number that occurred most frequently that is all about stem and leaf plots always the stem is at the left and the leaf at the right a single digit has a stem to be zero then you identify the lowest number and the highest number then you label that as your stem then you'll be doubling it to get your leaf you build it up all right, so the next example we have here is under Venn diagram. Okay, so now we have question under Venn diagram. For example, 25 students in a class read math, math, and science. 17 of them passed in science, while eight of them passed in both science and mathematics. Three students did not pass in any of the subjects. A, illustrate this information on a Venn diagram. B, how many students passed in mathematics? C, find the probability of meeting a student who passed in one subject only. So this is our question. How do we tackle it? Good. So questions and the Venn diagram. All that you need to do is to write down your data. That is, you write down the important information in the question. So let's. The investor sets they gave us to 25 students. Number of students who passed in mathematics was unknown. So we can represent it with a variable x. Number of students who passed in science, they gave us a 17. Be careful. Number of students who passed in both science and mathematics. Both science and mathematics as 8. Then the complement, science and mathematics. That is three of them did not pass in any other subject. Three. When you get to your data now, 
you now draw your Venn diagram. This is for mathematics. This is for science. Now we label our Venn diagram. The universal set 25. Number. The number of students who read mathematics, X. Number of students who read science, 17. Then, a 17. Then the complement. As three. Okay, good. Then we fill in our circles. So this is X. This is 17. And those who studied both science and mathematics, they gave it to us to be eight. So this circle includes those who studied mathematics and part of those who studied science. How do you get those who studied mathematics only? You have to do it by subtracting eight from the x to so minus eight. Then this side too, you have to do it by subtracting eight from the 17 to minus 17. Then how do you find the value of x, which is the mathematical? You now have to add everything inside your Venn diagram. This circle plus this circle plus this side all equal the universal set, not forgetting your complement. So this will give us x minus eight plus x, sorry, x minus eight plus eight plus 17 minus eight plus three equals 25. So simplifying this, you are going to get x minus nine plus three x plus nine plus three equals 25. So simplifying this, you are going to get x plus 12 equals 25. Now x is equal to 25 minus 12. Therefore, you are getting x to be 13. Not forgetting that this 13 is for those who studied mathematics, this side. So we have therefore, those who pass in mathematics, those who pass in mathematics, those who pass in mathematics is equal to 13. When you finish, you can redraw your Venn diagram and complete it. So let's complete our Venn diagram to make your work so nice and understandable. Okay, so we have complete Venn diagram. Okay, so with this one, if you really want to prove yourself, let's add everything and see whether we will get our 25. So five plus eight plus three plus nine. What is it giving us? 13, 16, 25. As an investor, so always when you get the values, fix it into your circles and see whether you will get your investor set to confirm your answer. Excellent. Then becomes the probability. So, what is the probability of selecting a student? Selecting a student. Who pass in one subject only? In one subject. Who pass in one subject only? The event over the sample space. What is the event now? One subject only is. That is this side. Five plus the nine. So five plus nine over the sample space, the universal set. 
are 25. So we are getting 14 out of 25. You can, if you can still simplify, you will simplify. All right. So that is that for this question as well. So example three, let's move on. So I believe if any question comes under Venn diagram, you will be able to answer it and answer it correctly. Okay, the so next question we have, in a school of 900 people, 30% study English, two out of five study social studies, and 150 study mathematics. The remaining study sign, find the I, number of people who study sign. I, I, find the percentage for sign. So in this case, how do you go about this question? There's a word problem. You have to analyze it and translate it into mathematical shape. Okay, so with this one, how to convert your percentage to a whole number. So you are going to find 30% of the 900. That is giving us 270 people. Then you convert the fraction two out of five of the 900. That is also giving us 316 people. With that, you can subtract your value. So you add them. So we have 270 plus 360 plus the 150. And this is giving us 780. Subtracting so this will give you, so therefore, those who study science, who study science is equal to 120 people. Okay, then the I, I part of the question. Find the percentage for mathematics. So how do you find the percentage? Okay, so the I, I question, the I, I part, find the percentage for sign. So you know the signs now, we have 120 over the total sign, 100. Okay, so simplifying this, what are we going to get? I'm waiting for you. Good. That is 13.33. That's a percentage. It is percentage. So bring the sign, the symbol. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I believe this tutorial was helpful. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to, to click on the notification bell for updates. I'll be sending more tutorials for you to learn. Your examination is approaching and I will encourage all to put up their best. Thank you. Until we meet again, please stay safe and learn hard. Bye.